When people hear the word UFO, they tend to tune out. However, the term does not necessarily mean little green men from Mars. It's a scientific term that means unidentified flying object. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, of UFO sightings and reports every year worldwide. In fact, just two days ago, flights in Bremen, Germany were grounded, canceled, or diverted due to a UFO showing up multiple times on the airport's radar screen. This comes on the heels of a July event that's now surfacing about a bizarre incident near London's Heathrow Airport, where a pilot was convinced he was going to collide mid-flight with a metallic object shaped like a rugby ball. Both incidents are still being investigated by authorities. Well, these reports are nothing new. Yet amidst the many, many UFO hoaxes, my next guest alleges that a fraction of the sightings are indeed extraterrestrial. His name is Dr. Stephen Greer, and he's the founder of the Disclosure Project, an organization that works with retired military and government officials in order to get Congress to investigate UFOs. But as a skeptic, I had a lot of questions. So I first asked him if he had one incident that he would pick to convince people like me that aliens have indeed made contact with Earth. That's a tough question because, you know, it's the weight of the evidence. And it's like J. Allen Hynek, who is the Air Force Blue Book guy, he said, look, he says, it's an embarrassment of riches. We have so much material. We have so much information. Um, but if you take for one case that we have in the Disclosure Project, and that's a man who was the senior guy at the FAA, and they were tracking this object over Alaska. And it was at one point in the sky, in one sweep of the, the radar, it would be 40, 50 miles away, moving completely non-linearly, not like an airplane. And we have the radar tape, we have the pilot report, we have all the evidence from the airline and the government. And this whistleblower who came forward, John Callahan, he said, I'm one of the senior officials in the government that only, not only have the evidence, but was part of a cover-up to keep the American people ignorant about it. And so talk about the Disclosure Project. It's the organization that you founded. Why and how did you formulate it? You know, it grew out of uh, an interest I had since I was a child. I, I, my uncle was an aerospace engineer at, with Northrop Grumman. And uh, I had a sighting when I was a young child and started an organization later uh, called the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence to look into are we alone and what can we do as citizens to bring out this information and perhaps make contact. I mean, it was a really kind of a visionary effort 24 years ago when we started it. Disclosure part project started because in my early days I was naive and I thought, well, if we put all this evidence together, government documents, astronauts, cosmonauts from the former Soviet Union who have seen these objects and we have all this and we give it to, in this case, Bill Clinton and his CIA director who I personally briefed on this subject, they'll do the right thing in the secrecy, bring out this information, it'll be one of the greatest discoveries in human history. Not only that, it'll bring out the technologies, which, frankly, is the reason behind the secrecy. We'll get to this in a minute. Well, what happened was that the political establishment didn't want to touch this. And so, so what I just found is that little by little, it was up to we, the people, to do it. So I started a grassroots movement to identify people who had the courage to come forward outside of their national security oaths, who had top secret clearances, and give evidence on this, and give materials, and give documents, and give photographs, and whatever they have. And it led to this big global effort called now the Disclosure Project. I wanted to bring it to Ancient Aliens really quickly because uh, it's an it's a entertaining documentary series yeah. on the History Channel. It surmises that ancient cultures have also documented UFOs. Oh, sure. I mean, going back hundreds of years, if aliens have been around for thousands of years visiting Earth, mm -hmm. why has their message been lost this whole time? Why haven't they delivered it? Well, I don't know that their messages have been lost, but maybe it's been subsumed or, or incorporated into various ancient traditions. If you look at the Hopis, if you look at Mesoamerica, uh, South America, there are a lot of traditions that may have actually come from encounters that happen with non-human or advanced life forms from other places. Now, this gets into a really tricky area, and it's, it's where the theologians have a problem with this, and that is, if you were to encounter something that's hundreds of thousands or millions of years more advanced than we are, every manifestation of their civilization would look miraculous, would look like a miracle or something that you would hear about in a, in a religious text. So the question becomes how much of the uh, stories that we have from ancient times, ancient cultures that we take as mythology might have been witnessing things that couldn't be explained even today, never mind 
2,000, 5,000, 10,000 years ago. I also can't help but bring up the Phoenix Lights because to me, I think that's one of the most fascinating yes, cases. Yes, I was there the day Were it happened. You? Yes. My goodness. Yeah. I want, let's play a clip really quick for our audience who don't know about this incident in 1997. Right. If you had been here 10 years ago and standing out here and looking up there at the, uh, at the lights and the view, um, you would have been astounded. You would have been amazed. Governor Symington is referring to what is now known as the Phoenix Lights, an object videotaped by many and seen by thousands over several nights in the Arizona sky in 1997. Major sighting here. It was described by witnesses as larger than a football field and silent. And I suspect that uh, unless uh, uh, the Defense Department proves us otherwise, that it was probably uh, some form of an alien spacecraft. So, Dr. Dr. Greer, you have the Arizona governor. You have thousands of people in Arizona who saw this. How is it possible that this is kind of an open and shut case right. when, you know, so many people saw this? And even he's saying, hey, I'm convinced. Well, in the disclosure project files, we have hundreds of cases like that, some of which are better that the public don't know about. So I tell people, people should go to our website. It's all up there. The videos, the testimony from all these government officials is all on our website. And so we haven't hit any, held anything back except some confidence since I've had to keep when I've had meetings at the Pentagon and elsewhere. But what I tell people is that the reason it's, it's, it's hidden in plain sight is that the establishment doesn't want people to know not so much that there's life out in the universe. There's two-thirds of the public believes in it, that there's intelligent life somewhere out there. Uh, over half believe we've been visited, all right, of the, and this is consistent in polls. It's the technology. How do you put something like that up in the sky and move it, no sound, completely quiet? You're not dealing with fossil fuels. You're not dealing with conventional rockets. You're dealing with an entirely new area of physics, which if it was disclosed, would mean the end of big oil, the, bit, the end of the petrodollar, the end of public utilities as we know it. It would be an entirely new energy paradigm. And so the macroeconomic power behind the secrecy it's what no one's been looking at. And this is what the Minister of Defense of Canada and I did a press conference on a few years ago, Paul Hellyer, and I did a, a press conference about this, that it's the energy and technology part of this story that has led to the extreme secrecy and also the extreme ridicule. Let's talk about your documentary series because you were mentioning earlier that people, you've spoken to people who have actually taken these bodies out of crafts. I mean, mm -hmm. Dr. Greer, where are these bodies? I mean, in, the, in Sirius, you discuss the Atacama skeleton found in Chile as an extraterrestrial being. However, scientific analysis concluded that it's human DNA. But no, it actually, we, we never said it was ET. We said we don't know what it is. And the DNA analysis from uh, Dr. Nolan at Stanford is that 9% of the genetic material isn't matching to humans. Now, the, but, as of last week, we just discovered that the, the stature of this be, being, which is now, this is a six. Can I finish my question yes. really quickly? Because I think even making these allegations before you know, I mean, you're mm -hmm. saying that we don't know. Um, does it discredit your larger attempt to expose the truth about UFOs if you're saying these things? We can't see the, the, the beams that have been, you know, supposedly. Well, no, I, and I've never been to a facility where they've been autopsied. However, I know men who have been there, and those are the people in the disclosure project and who have gone on the record who actually have been on retrieval teams. So, and those are first-hand things. Now remember, you know, if the New York Times had three people to confirm a very controversial political story, they'd run with it. We have over 110 on digital videotape with top secret clearances, name, rank, and serial number. These are not anonymous. So I tell people, please don't take my word for it. As for the Atacama humanoid, very controversial. You know, the Huffington Post had five million people on their site when this thing broke a few months ago. Um, we still don't know what it is. Now, the people who say it's human, they're jumping the gun. The people who say it's ET, they're jumping the gun. How can equating UFOs with aliens be credible at this point when we live in a world drone technology has existed? I mean, now it's so prevalent, and it probably has existed for decades prior, Dr. Green. How can we ever tell mm -hmm. what's a drone, what's a UFO? Uh, well, A, you have to know the science behind it. The drones uh, that people see make a noise, like this case that just happened in Germany. It's very noisy. Those things are not quiet. Now, this does open up another whole discussion of what do we have in our classified projects that might look like a UFO, and do those exist? The answer is yes. We have been designing and building what are called EMG, electromagnetic gravitic, anti-gravity, pop culture term, not proper, but things that defy gravity, that float and are silent, 
since the 50s, since the 1950s. Now, it's highly classified material. Um, you know, the, the main writer, one of the big writers for Jane's Defense Weekly, uh, Nick Cook, wrote a book called the, the, the Hunt for Zero Point talking about pulling energy from the zero point energy field and how that's been applied into anti-gravity systems that are very classified at uh, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin. So I think that we have to have enough information if you're investigating this to know that some of them are just misidentifications. Some actually are extraterrestrial vehicles because there have been creatures and beings seen associated with them. Like the French government case where one of these objects landed and there were four creatures outside the UFO in a lavender field. And this is in the official Japan, or the equivalent of their NASA report. Mm -hmm. So don't take my word, listen to the French government's report. Same thing at the Bentwaters case in England. An object landed, there were ETs seen associated with the landing. But if it's in these official reports, how come there's no official documentation of the beings? That's what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very good question. You'd have to ask the people keeping the secret. I mean, I wasn't there when those things happened. Uh -huh. We've just interviewed and found the people, the men who were there, and some women who were involved hands-on with these in encounters. So uh, the ET issue, I think, is very clearly established through the body of evidence we have. But there's something, I think, even more spectacular. And this, is, this turns this whole question you asked on its head. If some of these objects that are moving at 100,000 miles per hour and making right-hand turns without decelerating our, or hours, what are we doing using jet engines and rockets? What kind of technologies are extant, uh, are out there, that might give us an entirely new civilization without pollution, poverty, what have you? This is, I think, where this is the biggest part of the story. It isn't the ET end of it. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the high tech energy and propulsion part of the story, which is at the heart of the secrecy. That was Dr. Stephen Greer, UFOologist and founder of the Disclosure Project.